My name is Ryan Fleck, and I'm helping the X Algorithms Alliance to create a freely accessible and simple way to publish and fetch algorithms on the internet. I specifically work to improve the XAlgo rule specification and the core rule interpreter. The goal of this presentation is to show the creation and execution of a simple X algorithm rule. The rule will be executed after each step is written, so hopefully it's easy to follow along and see the side effects in the updated tables. The rule I will be writing today will apply sales tax to an invoice based on the invoice's region. Note that each exemption to this rule, or other special treatment of a good or service, on a provincial or federal level, can just be represented as another discrete rule. Let's first look at our supporting files. Here we have tax.context.json, our sample xalgo fact message. It contains the context of our sample transaction, including a region and subtotal. Moving along, our data, the base reference table for Canada's value added taxes, is stored in provincial VAT.json. Every reference table like this will have an associated metadata file, including a link to any documentation, a maintainer, uh, our metadata file is stored in provincial VAT.table. So with these three supporting files, we can start writing our rule. The Internet of Rules has a deliberately limited domain-specific language called XAlgo. I will explain step-by-step step how to write the base rule for Canada's value-added tax, setting aside for the moment all related rules and exceptions. The first thing we're going to do is import the base tax rates from our table file. We use a require statement to do this. We type require tax provincial our version and a semicolon. Running this, we can see our data has been imported successfully. We can now access this immutable data and use it in our rule. We will assemble the new table applicable VAT with the columns from provincial VAT and a semicolon. Running this, we can see all the data from provincial VAT now appears in our new table. But we only really want to manipulate the data relevant to our incoming message. None of the other regions are relevant, so we can match the region. We do this with a when statement. So returning to our rule, typing when at region is equal to message region. Running this, we can see that our applicable VAT table is now one row, the correct row. Note the region matches the value sent in our simulated message. Now we can move forward and manipulate this data. First, let's get our final VAT. In Canada, this is called HST, and to calculate HST, we can simply add our GST, federal tax, and PST, provincial tax. We will accomplish this with a map operation. So map, table, applicable VAT, using HST, our new column name, is equal to add GST and PST. Great. Let's run that. Good. We can see that HST is equal to 13 for this row, which is 8% federal tax and 5% provincial tax. Now I'm going to move this HST value to another table so we can cleanly separate our calculations. Let's assemble a new table, transaction VAT, with just the HST column from our applicable VAT table. And Running this, we can see our new table, transaction VAT, with a single column and row containing our previous HST value of 13%. Our next few steps will be to get the tax rate and finally to calculate our total for the transaction described in the incoming XAlgo fact message. Let's get the floating point tax first. So map table transaction VAT, that is to transform that table, using tax rate, our new column name, 
is equal to, we can multiply our HST by 1 hundredth and add it to 1. So type add 1, multiply 1 hundredth, which is divide 1 over 100 HST and all of our closures. Let's run this. Uh, excellent. We can see that our tax rate is equal to 1.13, and that's correct. We can multiply this value with the price in a purchase order to determine the payable tax. Let's apply our tax rate to the subtotal from the message. So map table transaction VAT using total is equal to multiply tax rate with subtotal. Running this, we see our final calculated total, which is $10 times the rate of 1.13 for transactions within Ontario. And that's it. Let's run that one more time. So what happens to this data? Well, it's returned to whoever sends the message and they can use it for whatever they want. <laughs> Thank you for watching this step-by-step -step explanation of how to write a simple rule using the XALgo specification. For examples of other rules written in XALgo, please visit our project page on GitHub. Thanks again, and goodbye.